Hello, everyone, and welcome to Known Coworking and Score Fairfield County's workshop on business planning, SWOT, Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats Analysis. I'm Bob Hogan, the workshop coordinator and a business mentor here at Score Fairfield County. I'm going to be your host today, and our presenter is Harvey Hoffman. More on Harvey in just a minute. Uh, this is a virtual and in-person workshop. It's being done in collaboration with Known Coworking, which is providing the facilities for today's workshop. So I'd now like to turn it over to yeah, Barb Angle at Known in New Haven to give some brief introductory remarks. Barb. Hey, thanks, Bob. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I'm Barb Mangle. I am the community manager here at Known Coworking. We are at 139 Orange Street in downtown New Haven on the fourth floor of the Palladium Building. And we're a co-working space that is also an entrepreneur serving organization. We regularly host networking events every Wednesday. We call them Wind Down Wednesday. It's essentially a happy hour for especially entrepreneurs and um, professionals. Today, if you happen to be in the New Haven area, come on down after the workshop because we're also hosting networking here. Um, we are also recruiting right now for a BIPOC business accelerator program that we call the Knownpreneurs Growth Lab. We extended the application deadline to August 31st. This will be our fourth cohort. It's a free program. It's a 16-week program. And if you have any questions about it whatsoever, feel free to send me an email. You can reach me at barb at knowncoworking.com. Um, today's workshop is the first of what I hope will be many workshops that we do in collaboration with SCORE. Just as SCORE um, likes to be an organization that does all kinds of things to support entrepreneurs wherever they are on their journey, Known is the same way. So I'm hoping this will happen again. Um, we have, there are four of us in the room in person here. So if people have questions from the room, I will be moderating for them. And I'm really looking forward to this workshop from Harvey. So, and if anybody has questions about known, um, feel free to, to put them in the Q&A and I'll try to answer them. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Harvey. Great. Thanks, Barb. Um, now, just some brief information on SCORE. SCORE is a nonprofit national partner of the SBA. And locally here at SCORE Fairfield, Fairfield County, we have over 100 volunteers with a wide range of industry process and subject matter expertise. And we offer three primary value-added services to small business owners. First of all, we offer free one-on-one -on -one counseling, and you can access that in person or, or via video, telephone, or email. And you can do that by using the yellow bit.ly link that you see on the screen, or you can go to our website and click on the Request a Mentor button. Secondly, we offer a wide range of educational workshops and webinars, about 100 throughout the year, like the one today. And lastly, we have extensive resources on our website, including access to subject matter experts. Our next webinar will be uh, next Tuesday, August 23rd at noon. And the topic is QuickBooks Reporting with Karen Schwartz presenting. You can find more specifics on our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org. And if you're on our website, we also have a large number of recorded webinars that cover a wide range of business topics. And those can be viewed at any time just by clicking on the on-demand webinar button. Uh, just some logistics for uh, today's event. Uh, we have set aside time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. If you're attending via Zoom and have a question, please use the Q&A button at any time during the presentation. It's located in the lower part of your screen. If, As Barb mentioned, if you're attending in person and have a question, um, just uh, flag Barb and she will uh, moderate those from the uh, New Haven location. Our workshop will end promptly um, at the top of the hour at three o'clock to respect your time. The session is being recorded and a link to the recording will be available on the, our website, fairfieldcounty.score.org within the next day or so under on-demand webinars. It's now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Harvey Hoffman. Dr. Harvey Hoffman's background includes both industry and academic experiences. While in industry, he held positions ranging from research and development engineer, group manager, project manager, and general manager. In the aerospace field, he worked on the space shuttle and the Titan 34 rocket. He holds a patent for a digital scan converter employing an accelerated scan. He is currently a professor of the practice and associate dean in the School of Engineering at Fairfield University. He is the author of project management and capstone project books and more than 20 academic and technical papers. He teaches engineering management courses at Fairfield University. 
It's now my pleasure to turn it over to Harvey. Harvey, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Bob. So um, we're gonna cover a lot of material today. If you don't have to take notes, if you would like a copy of this, um, then go ahead and make note of my uh, email address, Harvey at F. Hoffman at yahoo.com. Send it to me in the next day or so, and I will get you a copy of this presentation. So that will be helpful. Okay, so we're going to talk about the business plan with particular emphasis on the SWOT. So we're going to talk about entrepreneurship in general. We're going to talk about the basic elements of a business plan. We'll show how the basic elements of the business plan ties into the SWOT strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And the, all of this together will give you a gap analysis that you can include into your business plan. So what's an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a tough, tough job. It's a person who assumes responsibility for the entire organization assumes responsibility for the management, the risks of the entire business venture. The entrepreneur is a decision maker. The entrepreneur should have analytical ability, into good interpersonal skills, a high drive, and should be a risk taker. These are a lot of different things that an entrepreneur has. Um, the entrepreneur also needs to have some knowledge of the business, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, as well as a good idea, hopefully some money, and a good personal credit history, because no matter how much money you have, it won't be enough. So from a personal skill standpoint, you've got to be a good decision maker. One of the things... That's a problem with a person like myself. I'm an engineer. An engineer is a very analytical person. And I am prone to something that I'll call analysis paralysis. I analyze things too deeply. At some point, you, you got to say to yourself, hey, enough is enough. Let's do it or not do it. So. The personal skills also includes the ability to juggle a bunch of different things at once. Organize. The ability to deal with stress. That unfortunately comes with a bunch of different jobs, but in particular, when you're an entrepreneur, there's a great deal of stress, but you have to have confidence in your own ability to make decisions and do things and get things done. You have to know your product. You have to, and I'll talk more about this in a few minutes. You have to know the market. You have to thoroughly understand what your competition is doing. What are they offering? Certainly, you have to be able to manage yourself and then to manage other people. You hear the word supply chain all the time. You've had it in this uh, COVID situation. Well, what is supply chain? Has, one has to know all the people who are providing product to you so that you can get your service or your product out the door. And then, of course, you have to be able to manage money or bring in a person who understands cash flow, who understands financing knows how to negotiate with clients and suppliers. And then most important, and you can't minimize this, you really need support from your family. 
support from your family and friends, but especially the family. Are they going to tolerate the stress that you're going to put them under? One of the things you'll discover when you start your own small business is that you're going to want to get involved in community associations. So network with local business groups. Very, very helpful. So what's a business plan? Whether you're gonna go for money immediately or not, doesn't matter. You need a business plan. You really have to put your ideas, your thoughts down on paper, okay? Because while it's in your mind and it's not on paper, it changes. So you have to be able to answer the questions, who, what, why, where, when, and how? Those are the old newspaper reporters' questions. Well, you have to be able to answer those questions about your business. And the business plan will help you crystallize your thinking, okay? If you want to talk to others, it's going to help you convey your vision to potential investors, people who will lend you money. You have to have some business goals. What are they? Okay. And how much money will you need to finance this whole deal? You got to plan. Planning is absolutely critical. And the business plan is going to help you pull these ideas together. So whether you're Starting the business, whether you're in operation today, whether you're expanding your business or even leaving the business, you have to have a plan. Okay. Every business plan, every business plan has this, these seven items. What's the product? What's the service that we're providing? Are we so are we solving a problem for somebody? Is there a need? There better be a need because if there's no need, we're in trouble. So we need a need. Are you different? Are you unique? And I'm gonna talk about all seven of these in a moment. All of these are really crucial. Who's the competition? What's my marketing plan? Do have an HR plan? And what about money? Behind all of this, we're going to take a look at the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and threats associated with every one of these areas. And that's going to go into your business plan. Okay. So the first item on that list was Describing the product or service, okay? Who's going to benefit from this? Who are your customers? Who are your clients? What problem are you solving? What legal risks are there? You better understand your liability. Is there a product liability? And then... And I skipped it a moment ago. You have to have the elevator pitch. Okay, what's the elevator pitch? Well, I come from New York City. And so by the time you, when you get into an elevator and you go to the top floor of the building, it might be 30 seconds, perhaps if it's a big building, it's 60 seconds. And you have a vice president a financial type who's in the elevator with you. This is your opportunity. So what you have to do is be able to provide a pitch. Explain to this vice president who's in the elevator with you who you are, what's your business, what, does you, what do you intend to do? So you're gonna go ahead and deliver this pitch. And you wanna be persuasive. You wanna practice 
until it comes natural, but you don't want to be a robot. You don't want to speak too fast. Neither do you want to ramble. So it takes a little bit of practice to come up with an elevator pitch to understand what your business is, be able to explain what your business is, what, you, what you're gonna be doing and who you are. <clears throat> well, need, who needs this product? Who needs this service? Okay, what do they really want? Why do they need this product or service? What are the benefits to people? Is it gonna be bigger, smaller, cheaper, better? What is the benefit of this product or service? Is this product or service a stepping stone to something better, bigger? Are you gonna show a person that they're gonna be able to save money? Or if it's a small business, if this is a business to business operation, are you going to be able to show them that, uh, hey, you can increase their revenue or perhaps you can improve their service? What are the benefits that accrue to the person who buys your product or service? If they get your product or service, what do they have to change in their organization, if anything? Do they have to have a, any process or procedure changes if this, especially this is important, if this is a business to business situation? So you've got to be able to say, what problem are you solving and what are the benefits to this organization? You've got to say what the need is. Well, why are you there? What's your solution? Is it, is it better than anything out, out there? How do you deliver the, search, the, the solution? Why can't someone else do the same thing? You have a secret source? Warren Buffett, and I'm sure you've all heard of Warren Buffett. When he buys a business, he wants to see a business with what I call a wide moat around the business. And the moat really addresses the competitive advantage that this company has. So what's the competitive advantage that you have? Sometimes the competitive advantage is that you have a patent. Sometimes the competitive advantage is that for anyone else to come into the business, it costs too much money. It's too difficult. They don't have the skills, perhaps. They don't have the knowledge. So what are the barriers to entry that in your business, in the business that you are thinking about? You know, I use an iPhone. I use Bank of America. I am not gonna switch from Bank of America to Peoples. Even if Peoples say they give me a lower cost, probably won't be much lower. And the reason I won't switch is because it's gonna take too much of my time to set up all my banking. So the switching costs for me to change from Bank of America to Peoples is too high. So, once a person is with you, will they stay with you because it costs too much for them, too much time, too much money for them to switch? Do you have a unique technology and do you have unique people who are doing this and providing the product or the service? So, Michael Porter is a uh, professor at the Harvard Business School. And he's come up with this thought, 
that I want to present to you. He says, if all you're trying to do is essentially the same thing as your competition, then it's unlikely that you'll be very successful. He is saying, you gotta be unique. You gotta be different if you wanna be successful. So think about what makes you special, what makes you different. You got to know your competition. This is part of the business plan. You have to write down in the business plan who are the comp competitors. How many are there? Where are they located? What's the difference between you and your com competition? Right? Sorry about that one. What's the difference between you and your competition? What's your competitive advantage over the competition? Are you really better? Are you sufficiently different? Are you different in terms of price? Do you have a better technology? Do you have some patents? Do you have a better location? That's a big deal for a business. Do you provide better customer service? And why will clients or customers pick you over someone else? You gotta understand what makes you different and understand why your competition, how, how you're different from your competition. So now <clears throat> you have to have a marketing plan, okay? You've got to understand why your products or services will sell. Who's your target? Who's your target client? Who's your target customer? How big is that market? How much penetration is there? Are there any demographics? Are you going after the 20 to 35 year old? Are you going after the 40 to 50 year old? Are you going after the 50 to 70 year olds? What's your demography? What about market location? And where will you be in the market? Okay, are you gonna sell high? Are you gonna sell cheap? What's the future of this industry? What's the future of the market? You know, more so today than any other time in history, products come and go. Products come and go. What you have to understand, what's the future of your industry? And what's the future of the market in the product or service? that you're gonna sell. That means you're gonna to have to do some research. And you're gonna to have to put that research down in your business plan. So as part of this, you wanna say, hey, what's the current demand? What's the current demand and what's the trend? So you have to understand the market, and a few moments ago, I was talking about the competition. What is the competition's strengths? And what's the competition's weaknesses? You have to understand that. And then how are you gonna get the world to know about your product or service? Are you gonna be on the internet, social media? Are you going to work with other partners? Okay. You have to understand that. How are customers going to know about your product and services? And how are you going to suggest to them or convince them 
to switch to your product or service if they're using somebody else? Why would they come to you? How are you going to generate leads? How are you going to generate leads? Okay. And, and then once you generate a lead, how will you contact these customers, these clients? Is it going to be telephone? Is it going to be email? How are you going to do it? And do you have the capability of doing it? So it's really important that you spend a little bit of time understanding the industry, understanding the market, understanding where things are going in that field. Is this a field that's going to be around for six months or is it going to be around for 10 years? Okay, so requires a little bit of work on your part. And this has to go into your business plan. HR, we read, we hear about you know, how difficult it is to recruit people today, how difficult it is to retain people hear about how many changes there that are being made. People are switching jobs. They're trying to start their own business. So how are you going to recruit and retain employees? How are you going to attract them? Do you have a management team? Maybe you don't need, you do need some kind of a management team if any at the very least, you need some consultants. You know, sometimes you don't want to hire a person, but what we'll do is we'll subcontract. We'll let someone else do the work, pay them. So we'll do some subcontracting. Now, also from an HR perspective, you are not going to hire an accountant or a bookkeeper, or a lawyer, but you will need them. So you're going to use a bookkeeper perhaps once a week or once every other week. You're gonna need a lawyer to set up the business unless you have uh, some capability in that area. You're gonna need an accountant to set your books up. So you have to plan on that these outside professionals to help you. And you gotta have the money, of course, because no one is inexpensive. Um, lawyers, you know yourself, lawyers charge two, three hundred dollars or more an hour. So you, you have to have funding for that. Here's something that most entrepreneurs don't even think about. That's financial planning. Every industry, every business has certain key performance indicators which an investor wants to hear about. Key performance indicators. I'm giving you some examples over here that a financial person uh, a bank, a venture capitalist will want to know, how quickly do you intend to start spend money? That's your burn rate. How much does it cost to get a client or a customer? That's, that's an acquisition cost. What will your gross profit margin be? What's your revenue? What do you think your annual revenue will be? And what's the cost of goods sold? Okay, Cox. How fast do you think your revenue is gonna grow from year to year? 
We're not starting a business to stay in business six months. So you have to have some kind of a financial plan that goes over several years. And there has to be, you have to show an investor that, hey, we're going to grow year over year um, a certain amount, whether that year over year growth is 20% or 30% or more, you have to show them. If you can't show legitimately that you're growing, you can forget about it. You're not going to get any money. What's my income, my revenue per customer? What's my retention rate? Not everybody is going to stay. So what is the retention rate in the field? And how will you measure customer or client satisfaction? These are all key performance indicators. These are called KPIs in the business in, in the financial world. And you have to have answers for this. Um, Remember I said you have to have a little bit of understanding of where you're going to be in the first couple of years. So we'll need uh, some indication of income over the two years, say. What's our cash flow? What's our budgets? Do we have a balance sheet? A balance sheet, those of you who are not sure, is what's our assets? and our liabilities at some point in time, typically that point might be December 31st. So if you're not profitable initially, and it's very common for a new business not to be profitable for six months to a year, well, when are you gonna be profitable? How much money do you need to break even? Okay, and if you're going to go to an investor or a lender, you better be able to explain to them what are you going to do with the money they give you? What will you do with the money? This all has to be in your financial plan. And then you have to think about how are you going to live while the business is in the process of becoming profitable. So these are all <clears throat> part of the financial plan. I said a few minutes ago that part of the financial plan requires you to do a SWOT analysis. So we're going to do a SWOT analysis and I'll show you how to do this. We have to talk about what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Well, what, when I say yours, I mean your businesses. Weaknesses, what are your businesses strengths? What are the opportunities? And I'm gonna discuss each one of these items in detail. What are the threats? And those threats could be the environment, those threats could be government, those threats could be another company. But this is needed for your business plan. <clears throat> you know, this is going to help you understand yourself. It's going to help you give you some insight into where your business can focus. It's going to help you understand the industry because I'm going to ask questions in the SWOT analysis that will force you to do, answer these questions. Okay. It's going to ask a question. The SWOT analysis is going to ask questions about your advertising and marketing strategy so that you'll have a competitive advantage. And then hopefully, You'll understand what the threats are. And you'll be able to react proactively. So this is what the, the SWOT analysis tool looks like. We have a box 
for the strengths and weaknesses and notice the strengths and weaknesses I'm asking about are within your organization. And then I'm gonna ask about the opportunities and threats to your organization that are outside of your organization, outside of your control, but you still know them. And so I'm going to look at each one of these boxes separately. Strengths, weaknesses, strengths in the organization, weaknesses in the organization, opportunities, and threats to the organization. Now, remember I said strengths right at the top of the page. These are the strengths. And you've got to answer all of these questions. It, I, you don't have to write all of this down because I'll be able to send you that, this information. But my goodness, what do you do well? <clears throat> what are your unique skills? Do you have specialized knowledge that others don't have? What's your experience? What do you do better than your competition? Do you need, do you have credentials and licenses? These are, should be strengths. Do you have financial reserves? Is there a high product or service demand? Do we have the appropriate employees? We have a sales staff. All of these things hopefully are strengths that you might have. If they're not, I'm gonna put them in the weaknesses column. Do you have a good website? Do you have good internet marketing platforms like Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and so forth? Do you have a high traffic location? Do you need one? Do you have a good marketing strategy? What about your brand? Do you have a patent or a trademark? Do you have the appropriate licenses and permits? These are all possible strengths. In the weaknesses, I'm going to ask you, what areas do you need to improve? What resources do you lack? What parts of your existing business are not very profitable? Maybe we have to do something about that. You have to be absolutely honest with yourself as you're preparing this SWOT. What costs you time and money? Are you adequately diversified? Do you have the pleasant problem of having too much work? You can't meet deadlines, in which case you're going to have to hire some people. Okay, do you have cash flow problems? Declining sales, that's a weakness, that's a problem. We have too much stock. I'm hearing that businesses today, Walmart in particular, they have too much stock, so they're having to do a sales in certain areas. Too much stock. You, one of the problems that entrepreneurs have is they don't like to keep records. Is that the case in your situation? You have to have some help. We have a weak brand name. What differentiates your product? Is it weak? Does everybody understand why your product or service is so much better? Or is your, are your customers happy? And as a weakness, do you have any Lawsuits coming up, that's a problem. So these are strengths and weaknesses internal to the organization. External to the organization, we have to understand what does our customer need? Where is the industry going? Are there seasonal trends? Are we prepared to handle seasonal trends? Okay, what can I do for my existing customers? How, how can I help them? How can you use technologies? Technology is changing so dramatically today. How do I use technology to make your business better? 
Are there other target audiences, target customers that I'm not reaching, but maybe I should? Are there other products or services that would supplement or complement the product or service that you're presently offering? Sometimes it's a good deal, good idea to develop a partnership with someone else, or maybe not exactly a partnership, maybe just an alliance with someone else. Do I have a niche target market? Is that a problem? Where are there social changes going on? Are there market changes going on? And what about the all important issue of federal, state and local laws and regulations? How is that hurting you? Or helping you? Okay. Is, are any of these federal, state, and local laws and regulations an opportunity? So last week, the president signed some a, a law, a law that will open up environment, that will emphasize environment. My goodness, that's an opportunity. So we have to look into that law. That's part of our business and see how we can sell product or services that that law will support. That was just last week. So there are federal, state, and local laws and regulations that might be an opportunity for us. On the other hand, let's talk about weaknesses in the outside world. Are there obstacles created in the outside world? What about our competitors? What are their strengths? What are our competitors doing that we're not doing? What's going on in the economy? Are they changing demographics? People are getting older, that's for sure. There are fewer younger people. There are fewer younger people going to college. That's a demographic change. What are the strengths in the industry or the weaknesses in the industry? Okay. Do other people have patents? That's a weakness on our part if we don't have a patent. Okay. Are there alternative, are there alternative products and services coming out that will make our product obsolete? Okay. Do our competitors have a similar product? Have they launched, have our competitors? launched a new advertising campaign. Is that hurting us? Okay. What about the weather conditions? Is that hurting us or helping us? It's destroying farmers. They don't have the water out west. So the weather conditions are hurting them tremendously. So we have to look at all of these things as are these weaknesses and how do we overcome these weaknesses? Just a sample over here, a computer store, uh, a local computer store might have some knowledge as a strength. They may have good relationships with the community, but a weakness, my goodness, the weakness you can see here, their price is probably higher than the big box stores. And they don't have the brand power that the big box stores have. Are there opportunities? Perhaps, perhaps there are opportunities to improve training and providing the service that the big box stores don't offer. What about threats? Well, the big box stores are threats because they can cut prices. And today in our computer store that we, fictitious computer store, the computer is an appliance. People don't, People can look for price. So that's a, a threat to our product. Here's a, a Starbucks. I'm going to skip this. But we can take a look at pizza. Pizza, Strengths is uh, Domino's is a big worldwide 
brand, a weakness, people are thinking about high calorie, high fat foods. How do you change that? How do you change our food? So it's not so high calories. Um, so <clears throat> the, these are uh, weaknesses, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we should be uh, thinking about. Um, same thing here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to skip this because uh, I don't want to take that much time doing this. But my goodness. Um, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are something you should do. Once I have the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, I create something called a gap analysis. You see, once I understand what my strengths are today, or my, my, or my weaknesses, where do I want to be? over some time, where do I want to be? So that's the gap and what do, and so I have to come up with an action plan. And this action plan, going from the opportunities to solving the threat issue, that's my action plan. And your investor is gonna wanna know what your gap analysis is, and how are you going to fix it? What's your plan? <clears throat> so perhaps the solution is I have to hire more employees. Or perhaps I have to get additional machines. Or maybe I need a better website. That's what my SWOT analysis might show, that I have a gap in certain areas. I have to diversify my product or service. My goodness. So that is the gap analysis. As part of the gap analysis, as part of any KPI performance indicators, you have to be able to measure. Now that's very, very crucial people that you would have to be able to measure everything, track the number of employees, track your competition, track your actual income versus the expected, the budgeted, Track or everything that you can possibly do, okay? Because if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. That means you, you, if you can't measure it, you don't even know about it. So you take this, the gap analysis and the SWOT analysis and you introduce it into your business plan. You understand and the KPIs that you're gonna follow. And you're gonna show in your business plan how you will overcome the weaknesses. And you're gonna show how you're gonna take advantage of the business opportunities. And you're gonna show how you eliminate the weaknesses that are in your business and you wanna protect your business from these threats. Okay, here's something interesting that may people are unaware of. Um, typically, we have a, a, an equity investor, or perhaps you know, somebody who wants a piece of your business. They'll take ten percent, twenty percent, or maybe you have a bank. That's the lender. That's the debt investor. What's interesting is that many entrepreneurs are very intuitive. They rely on their experience, their industry knowledge, and their gut feelings to tell them whether a project makes sense. But the investor, whether it be the equity investor or the debt, the bank, they don't, they're a different kind of a person. They want the facts. And if they see some misleading statements, their due diligence process when they're trying to look to determine whether they'll invest in you or loan you the money, they, if they see some misleading statements, they will turn off immediately and they won't give you the money. So it's 
entrepreneur thinks one way, the investor is very fact driven. And so you have to make sure that you thoroughly analyze and plan your project. Now, here is a, um, a summary of everything or most of what I've talked about today. This is this little chart will tell you you have to fill this whole chart out and understand what are we selling? What services are we providing? Describe the product or service. Remember that uh, elevator speech? What's the need? How do you know there's a need? Why are you unique? What makes you different? Who's the competition? Who's your target market? What resources do you need today? What's my marketing plan? What's my business concept? Am I a distributor? Am I gonna be an on-ground location, a store? Am I gonna license my product or service? What are my KPIs? How do I know I'm succeeding? Do I have a social networking approach? How are you going to distribute your product or service? Where is your location? Remember the, the data with respect to expenses, the revenue and the gross margin for a couple of years, you need that. My legal structure, most of the small companies are going to be LLCs. You can actually do an LLC in the state of Connecticut by yourself. You don't need a lawyer to do that. But you do need a lawyer to do a corporation. How about insurance? What kind of insurance will you need? Will you need liability, malpractice? Do you need any professional certifications? The permits? Okay, do I understand my field or industry? Is it a growing one? Is it a mature field? Is it declining? Are there federal, state, or local issues that I should be aware of? Are they gonna destroy or build my, my business? And do I have any intellectual property? And then finally, do I need any government or professional approvals? Am I making a medical device, in which case I have to go to the FDA? I might also have to go to the UL Underwriters Lab. Um, if I'm selling to Europe, I'll have to get approval from ISO or EC, the European Commission, in order to sell an electronic product to Europe. So these are some ideas that you should be aware of. And this last chart kind of summarizes the entire business plan. Um, we can talk about some questions now, if you wish. Uh, and if you want, uh, you can get a copy of this by sending me an email at the bottom. Okay, make sure you put your return email address so that I can just put it out to you. And now uh, we can open up the question. Okay, that's, uh, that's great, Hardy. Um, we will use the remaining time for Q&A and we'll take as many as we can in the next uh, five or six minutes. If you are on Zoom, uh, please submit them by the Q&A button in the lower portion of your screen. If you are attending in person in New Haven with Barb, just raise your hand and uh, Barb will uh, jump in. Um, first of all, maybe uh, Barb, I'll, um, I'll go to you. Are there any questions um, from the room in New Haven? Yeah, Michael has a question. What's your question, Michael? Yeah, I am, uh, I'm a professor of cancer research at the University of California. And I, it's going to be crazy and not going to believe. Okay. I have come up with a simple way to help preventing people from dying of cancer. And we 
found out there's an early elect window in the first three years of the church, and then it's a minimum, and then it starts up again. So we call these early elect. And I published a number of papers uh, explaining how to defend the early elapses and how I want to work in the late elapses. And I published a lot of papers. I gave advice to give talks around the world to give donations to people. Yes, I'm listening to Harvey Cook. By the way, we're all friends. I'm saying this thing as I would be crazy if it's suicide. I see. It's going to be so impossible. What I'm taking out is I want to raise about two million dollars. It will take two years to try and get this thing going, and I will expect no revenue. I will just be able to take this two million dollars, hire people, and put an office together, and all that. As I'm thinking of what Mr. Harvey's talking, it's crazy for me to do this. Right. So many barriers mm -hmm. that here to there. Right. That I I just think it along. I, I have a fat family, a fat family will always be there. Mm -hmm. I might submit a real fat application and just wait for it to happen on its own. I might not want to get involved. So, excuse, me, excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. Perhaps we could let Harvey um, briefly oh, comment please. so we have time for some other questions. Okay. So I just want to summarize, it sounds though like you're saying, you know, you, you want to get something from the academic world out into the business world, but it sounds like based on what you learned from Harvey, it doesn't make sense. So when that happens, how do you decide? Is that sort of what you're asking? Yeah, I just, until Harvey says that, until I heard Harvey talk, I thought it was more practical. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right, Harvey. We'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Okay. I I could not hear the entire discussion. Um, there's a vast difference between the academic world and the business world. Um, I've been in both. I retired from industry. I also had my own business, um, and then I decided I left everything and went into the academic world. Um, academics don't think about money um, in terms of from, from a business perspective. So yeah, you have to think about, do I have enough money to live for a few years or, or for, for a year? And then how do, how do we convince somebody to, to buy the product? I mean, this is not a trivial answer and, and the, I, I can't really respond to the the detailed question that you you, you raised. Um, we could have a private discussion if you want, or an email discussion, but uh, I, I can't really go into too much detail based on what I just heard. I apologize, I really can't. No, that's, Harvey, that's uh, totally fine. We appreciate the, uh, it's, it's difficult to answer something that complex in the, in the time that we have. Um, we have a, a question from, uh, from Lena, actually two, um, and her questions are, is a sole proprietor proprietorship equal to an LLC? And, and what if they're your product that's being created, there, there's nothing else in the market? So two separate questions there. Okay, the answer is an LLC is something, is a sole can be a sole proprietorship, yes. Um, but keep in mind, I am not a lawyer, so I'm not giving you any legal advice. But yes, you can have an LLC and you can do that by yourself. Uh, the second question, uh, if there's nothing else on the market, so that raises a bunch of different questions. Um, if you go ahead and make the product and or provide a service, I don't know what it is, and someone else sees it, they could duplicate it. And if you're a big company, you might be able to make it for a cheaper price. So the only way you can protect yourself, if it's a product, is to go ahead and patent it. And I will tell you this, that I, I give another lecture on patents, and patents 
uh, ain't cheap. It's very expensive to go ahead and patent something. So you have to have a lot of confidence. And then after you patent something, you don't go into business. What you do is you license it. You sell it to someone else. Let them go into in, to sell it. You sell it to a, you license it to a big company. Um, you don't want to go in and uh, start a business yourself because that will cost too much money. Great. Thanks, sir. Just, uh, just one clarification, Lena, on the sole proprietorship and the LLC. You, you do, as Harvey mentioned, you do need to um, apply um, for an LLC and that limits your liability. If you don't do that and you're in business, then your liability will not be limited in the, in the sole proprietorship. So they, the difference between the two is the limitation on the liability. Um, just uh, unfortunately, we are out of time and that's all the time we have today. As a reminder, recording of the webinar and the materials will be on the fairfieldcounty.score.org website under on-demand webinars within the next day or so. Our next webinar will be on Tuesday, August the 23rd at noon. And the topic is QuickBooks Reporting with Karen Schwartz presenting. Again, if you'd like to take advantage of free individual counseling, you can use the yellow bit.ly link that was on the screen earlier, or you can go to our website and click on request a mentor. And I'd like to thank Barb Nangle and the Known Coworking for hosting and their help in planning this workshop with SCORE. I'd also like to thank everyone for attending today's workshop. And in closing, a big thank you to Harvey Hoffman for presenting today and stay well, everyone, and enjoy your weekend and the rest of the day. Yes, thanks, Harvey. Thanks, Bob. And thank everybody for coming. Take care. Take care.